Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. So my name is Sergey. Um, today I'm going to talk about challenges and solutions in secure inter-domain traffic exchange. And this is not very new topic. However, I still wanted to bring something up. So as everyone here aware, this June is actually 30 years since we saw the first draft of RFC for BGP, which was drafted in June 1989. But um, at the same time, we have to remember that it was drafted on two napkins in, in the lunch break on IETF uh, uh, conference. And as we can imagine back then in 1980s, the visionaries wouldn't have uh, understanding and awareness of all the challenges we have to face nowadays. And BGP was fundamentally based on mutual trust between the networks. And this principle led to a number of incidents. Uh, the scale, the real scale is thousands per year and only the most notorious one reaching the public eye. Results, uh, traffic redirection, eavesdropping, and uh, denial of service and black holing. Incidents are thousands. However, uh, the issue, the underlying issue is only a few of them. And they vary between accidental routing leaks or intentional prefix hijacks, and also can be a sophisticated attack on, <clears throat> which was demonstrated by Capel and Pils of, in 2008. And all of them, are possible because PGP do not have default mechanism uh, to protect its own control plane. To overcome this, the best practices for securing the main traffic exchange were put together and published in vendor neutral way in mutual agreement norms for routing uh, security and also a special publication for, on CIDR by NIST. Uh, they describe everything included in standard BGP possibilities to secure the traffic uh, exchange in, from prefix filtering, communities, policies, enforcement, and so on, all of the best practices. However, this is a default. What's new we have nowadays? Along with traditional available tools, there are a number of uh, new suggestions and proposals. Um, it, there was introduction of BGP roles, which are negotiated when the BGP peering is established. Uh, there was also uh, a requirement to introduce optional non-transitive attributes to prevent route leaking and optional transitive attributes to detect route leaks. All of these efforts are currently in IT of draft state and uh, please make yourself familiar with them, uh, links will be available and very easy searchable on the internet. This is what comes to route leaks. What, there are other problems and they are also new, not, not new. With route leak prevention, there is also a huge gap in efforts to um, authorize origin of the prefix. And it was proposed to um, address this more than 15 years ago via Secure Origin BGP. It involves uh, published information about BGP connections, and um, this approach is, has some drawbacks. For example, problem with Im implementation on internet exchange points. So it didn't fly. And you? Proposal, which is also in ITF draft uh, at this point of time, is introduction of a new object for RPKI. This object is actually authorizing the propagation of prefixes by the customer, and it customer can give authorization to its service provider to announce its prefixes to its peers. And this also has some drawbacks and we have to consider them because this doesn't work very well for announcement from provider to the customer and it leaves the door for hijacks half open. 
So we touched on RPKI. What is this? Um, I, I hope majority of, of you familiar with that, but uh, just to um, refresh the memory, it's nothing else but a hierarchical system of public keys based on X509 with extensions for IP and autonomous system numbers. And the key of this technology is a ROA, which is route origin authorization. It is signed statement um, uh, about which autonomous system is authorized to originate specific prefix in BGP. And it works pretty well for filtering routing leaks. However, there is still door open for malicious hijacks. Because anyone can still prepend the valid autonomous system number and forge the announcement from their system and attract traffic because of the short SIS pass, for example. And also, there are some things to consider. For example, um, since databases are populated manually, there is also a huge human factor which play a role in here and affects the database consistency in IRR. There is also some legal issues affecting the deployment of the feature in some parts of the world, but this is a separate conversation. So prefix propagation and as pass validation was um, being discussed for more than 10 years and it ended up in ratification of standard in last year of BGPSEC, described in RFC 8205. And how it works is uh, pretty straightforward. So imagine AS1 decide to propagate the prefix P to AS2. First and foremost, it has to sign raw in RPKI database for this prefix. And also it has to have uh, to sign the announcement to AS2 with its private key. Then when IS2 received the prefix from IS1, it, it first goes and check the ROA for the prefix P, which is actually allowing IS1 to announce it. And also it checks that announcement was actually addressed to IS2. Then it signed it announcement to IS3, IS3 signs to IS4, and then it reached IS5. So when IS5 checks the announcement, it first of all verifies that IS1 was able and was authorized to uh, announce prefix P. And also it can check the AS pass of the announcement and compare it with the signature within, within the announcement itself. So it leaves no way for AS6, which at some point decide to fake connection to AS1 and forge the origin uh, announcement to AS, uh, from AS1 to AS5, because AS1 has never signed its advertisement to AS6. This way, AS5 will be able to determine that AS6 is forging the announcement and drop it or do any other action it decides. It, uh, it decide. So it works pretty well in theory, but in practice, we have to deal with computational cost because in this way, we have to consider that each NLRI will have to be uh, carried in separate message, in separate update. And also update message has to traverse the same AS sequence as contained in the message. Also, there are some uh, operational issues which can be determined as what we're going to do when we have to depeer, and also legal challenges. What are we going to do with private keys? Is it going to be a private key per autonomous system or per the, the router? So, to address issues described in RPKI, a new proposal was uh, suggested, and it's called DISCO, which is Decentralized Infrastructure for Securing and Certifying Origins. And it's based on automated approach of de facto verification of reachability of the prefix through the autonomous system which is advertising it. It is based on the whole infrastructure based, uh, con consisting of vantage points, registers, and repositories. However, this approach has at least one flaw. If an adversary may decide to interrupt the certification cycle, it can just simply start to announce the same prefix during that certification cycle. In that way, 
nor the adversary, nor the legal owner of the prefix will be able to certify, which is another case is denial of service. To conclude, after we review all of these existing and newly proposals, uh, which help with current BGP control plane attacks, we can say that none of them, if worked separately, can address all the issues we have to face right now. So we will likely have to implement some combination of them and also work on something else. However, the core of all of the efforts is common and it is RPTI. So major players in the field already not only started to populate RPTI database with ROAS, but they also start to verify the announcement from their peers and also enforce policies based on this. So for example, if announcement was not valid, it will likely be dropped or at least deprioritized. Also, RIPE NCC held the RPKI deployed on back in March, and there is very good learning material available out there. So, what can you do to make sure that you are protecting your address space from accidental and malicious attack? First of all, go and check if your address space is signed by your leader. If it's not, this urges ISP and the leader to do that. And here is a list of good collection of reading materials, which you can get yourself familiar and up to speed with all the topics we just touched. And that is pretty much it from my side. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have.